My name is Jim, and we're going to be talking about the Milwaukee M18 cordless deep cut bandsaw today on Manjaro. This is Milwaukee's M18 fuel deep cut variable speed portable bandsaw. It's the model 2729-20. The dash 20 means that I got this as the bare tool. It didn't come with any batteries. There's dash 21 that comes with one battery, dash 22 that comes with two batteries. You can choose whichever one you want, depending on how many batteries you already have. So let's go through that name there a little bit. The M18 means that it uses the 18 volt uh, Milwaukee batteries. Those are the bigger ones. They also have M12 for 12 volt batteries. It's a fuel that means a couple things. The most important being that it has a brushless motor. Most of the Milwaukee tools now, the higher end tools all have brushless motors. Um, that gives you a little more runtime. The motor's a little more efficient, so you might get a little more power, a little more runtime. Not a super big deal on a tool like this because you're not gonna be using this all day. It's kind of a, you make a couple cuts and you know, that's kind of what you're gonna be using it for. But it, the brushless motors are also a little lighter and this is already a pretty heavy tool, so that is a benefit there. This tool weighs about 14 pounds, so it can be a bit much to handle. Now it's a deep cut. That means that it has a five inch by five inch cut capacity here. So if you wanted to cut something, uh, you know, I wouldn't be wanting to cut a five inch solid piece of steel there, but if you want to cut a five by five tube, it'll be able to do that or a five inch diameter pipe as long as that's the OD, you should be able to do that no problem and it'll fit through here. Now it does, the blade is offset a little bit from the main body of it. So that does allow you, if you're cutting something thin, you can slip it past that a little bit. It's not much, but if you only need to trim a quarter inch off something, it could come in handy for that. So it's a variable speed. That means that up here, there's a little dial. It goes from one to five. The maximum speed on this is 380 surface feet per minute. That's a pretty good speed for cutting steel. Um, it's not fast enough for cutting aluminum. So if you're gonna be cutting aluminum, it's not gonna work your greatest. It'll still work, but it's not the ideal speed. If you're gonna be cutting stainless steel or titanium or something like that, you really wanna slow this down. You wanna go down to a one or a two if you're gonna be doing a, a stainless steel. A couple of the features of the saw, it's got a rafter hook here. So if you wanna hang this up, you know, you've got a building you're working on, there's exposed rafters you can hang it on. It also works great if you just wanna hang it on a shelf or something like that, you can hang it on from that hook and that folds away very nicely. It's too big to be hanging on your belt, so it's kind of it not really meant for that. Now there's a little LED on the front here, and that shines down on the blade, which lets you see what you're doing nicely, but it also makes a shadow where the blade is gonna land. So that lets you line up your cut very nicely. Very convenient for that. It does have to be a little dark for you to be able to see that shadow. So if you're using a bright sunlight, it's not gonna work so well for that. This bottom, uh, I don't know, guard piece here, sticks out so you can retract that if you really need to get up close otherwise you can have it stick out farther for some more support so that's pretty convenient now most of this is metal the main housing of this is all metal to put that tension on the bandsaw blade these guards on the side and the handle of course are plastic though that's not a bad thing you know it would be a very it's already heavy and it would be even heavier if all this was metal and i found it to be pretty durable i dropped it once and it's you know been fine after doing that this big lever you see here is to change the blades, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, up top here is where the battery goes. So I've got a five amp hour battery here, and that just slides in like that. You gotta use at least a five amp hour battery. If you use a like one and a half or a two amp hour battery, they're really meant for drills. It's not gonna have enough power to make any real cuts. If you're cutting something like plastic, it won't be a big deal, but if you're cutting metal, you really need to have a you know, higher capacity there. On the other side, you can see how the tool works. It's not super complicated. There's, a, there's two wheels and the bandsaw rides around the outside of them. This wheel is driven, this wheel is idler, and it, you know as the motor spins, it just pulls the blade around. Not super complicated. There's a little brush here that knocks the chips off from the wheel so that the little metal shavings and stuff won't get stuck in between the wheel and the blade itself. There's two bearing guides down here, and that keeps the blade very nicely supported for when you're making your cut. They're not adjustable, so if you're making a thin cut, you can't bring them closer together or anything like that. However, they do also twist the blade. That twist is mostly so you can see what you're doing better. You, if it wasn't twisted, when you're trying to look down it, you'd be looking straight this way, and you wouldn't be able to see your blade, you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing. So that twist allows it to be kind of offset from the body of the tool and lets you see what you're doing a little better. So the twist also makes it a little more uh, challenging to change the blades. I'll show you how to do that right now. It's gonna be a little difficult because it's upside down for me here. So there's two main types of blades Milwaukee seems to be selling right now. They have one for thin, thick metals and one for thin metals. This is an eight slash 10 tooth blade. I think this is a 12, 14 tooth blade. They come in three packs. They cost about $35 a piece. So they're not super expensive if they're gonna last a long time. Problem, and they, they do seem to last a long time unless something goes wrong. So this blade is hanging out here, it's unprotected. So if you drop something on it, that could hurt it. 
The other thing that I've had happen a couple times, uh, particularly cutting welded steel tube, is there's a lot of internal stresses in that steel tube. As you make the cut, it pinches the blade, and I've had that wreck of blade uh, either breaking it or just you know getting jammed in there and you know, have to break the blade to get it out. So if the blade isn't going to break, they last a long time, it's not too bad, but if you end up breaking blades or probably if you're cutting stainless or something like that, you're probably going to end up going through those blades pretty quickly. Changing the blades is pretty simple. On the back side here, there's a little lever. So obviously you want to take the battery out, always a good idea. I also like to wear these uh, cut resistant gloves. It makes handling the blades a lot nicer, a lot uh, you know, easier. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself on the sharp blade. So um, I also want to retract this blade, this table support, whatever you call it. it, makes it a little easier to get the blade out. So you just slide it out from the bottom here. And if you're lucky, it just pops out. And there you go. So I'm going to put a fresh one in just so we, when we do test cuts, um, you know, I'll be using a brand new fresh blade just so you can see how that works. This blade is almost as good and they seem to last pretty well and, and still cut pretty well after making quite a number of cuts. So first I like to slip it into the blade guys down here and then you got to flatten it out. And this is a little tricky. And then it just slips over the wheels like that. So then you flip the lever and tighten it. Then we'll put the battery in and just run it for a second. And it should line up just not fine. So easy peasy. It's not too big a deal. I do like having these gloves on. It makes it a lot easier to deal with though. All right, so let's go make a couple test cuts here and we'll see how this guy works. Piece of electrical conduit here. This is about a one inch diameter piece. I switched over to the 12 slash 14 uh, variable thin metal blade. So we'll make a cut here and you can see how quickly it'll cut through this. So super quick and easy. It doesn't leave the cleanest cut. There's a good bit of burrs around here, so you have to clean that up, but um, it's super quick to do stuff like that. Okay, I've got a piece of quarter inch thick hot rolled steel, three inches wide, just flat bar here. So we'll make a cut through here. So cut through that flat bar really nicely. I was using the thin blade, it left a really nice finish on there. There's a little bit of a burr, obviously not too big a deal. It doesn't spray chips everywhere, they just kind of fall on the, the ground, which is really nice. And it's pretty quiet and easy to do, and it cut it with no problem. So now we're going to move on to something a little more challenging. So this is a three inch by four inch by quarter inch thick steel tube. It weighs about 60 pounds. So we're going to cut a chunk off the end here. So this will take a couple minutes. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's a pretty beefy piece of steel. And we're gonna cut it with this and we'll see how it goes.
So you can see it cuts that without any problem. Now on these big steel tubes, I found that it can wander a little bit. You can see at the end there, it kind of shut off. Now that was the side I wasn't looking at. This side here where I was paying attention to, it's a little bit straighter. So it can, it can kind of twist a little bit there, which isn't the greatest, but it's a pretty big beefy piece of tube. Lastly here, I want to cut a piece of aluminum just for something a little different. So this is a two inch diameter piece of, you know, just 6061 aluminum. Um, I've still got the extreme thick metal blade on here. It's an eight slash 10 tooth blade. That's the same one I was using for the steel tube. I've got it set to the maximum speed of five. I've had it set for that for all the different uh, cuts that I've been, made so far here. Um, on the aluminum, I, like I said, you'd really want something a little bit faster, but that's what it is. So it should work all right without that anyway though. Okay, so it has no problem there. Uh, I did wander a little bit with my cup, but that's probably mo mostly my error there. I've had it, fa I found that if I use a little bit of a uh, cutting lubricant with this, particularly on aluminum, it does work quite a bit better. So this thing really has no problem with anything you're gonna encounter on a regular basis. This big, heavy structural steel tubing, it makes it through no problem. It is does take a little bit long, but that's gonna happen with any sort of cut when you're cutting this much metal. No problem, no muss, doesn't spray sparks everywhere, which is really nice. We'll say if you try to cut something solid that's about the, the maximum capacity, it is going to struggle quite a bit with it. This is a piece of three and a half inch diameter ductile iron. Um, and you can see, hopefully you can see, this cut goes like this through here. I had a lot of difficulty making this cut. It kind of bound up a couple times. Um, I did this a couple months ago, so I didn't get it on film. but And it ended up being a very curved, kind of swoopy cut. And that wasn't anything I did. I was trying to cut it straight, but it just the, I think it doesn't have enough blade tension and the, the tooth pattern on this even this thick metal blade is really too fine to be cutting something this thick so not too surprising it did make it through here i was able to make the cut like i said with the aluminum it works fine even though it's probably too slow i do use this uh, tapmatic edge lube i'll just stick that on the blade a little bit and then i found that that does help with the cutting quite a bit for cutting aluminums i don't ever use it with steel or anything like that one other thing i found really useful about this is that you can mount it in a little table like this as well so I'll do another video review just on this, this table in particular, but there's a couple different ones out there. It's really convenient if you need to be making, you know, cutting a, a thinner piece of sheet or something like that, and you need to be making a curved cut. Super convenient to be making cuts like that on a table like this. So something just to keep in mind if you have one of these, definitely recommend getting a little table like this. I'm a big fan of this bandsaw, but there are a couple downsides. The first are that it's quite heavy. It, you can't really use it one-handed. You can put, pick it up with two hands and then place it on the, the workpiece and use just one hand to guide it, so that's pretty nice. But sometimes it'd be really convenient if I could pick it up with one hand, hold a piece of material in my other hand, and you know just make a cut that way or hold the piece down so it doesn't spin. Round stock has a tendency to spin if you try to cut it with the bandsaw and it doesn't have the clamp down. So if I could pick it up with one hand, it'd be super convenient. Now they do make smaller versions of this. They even make an M12, a 12 volt version. I don't know what the capacity is that off the top of my head, but if you're doing things like you know one inch diameter conduit and things like that, it's gonna be super convenient for that. And I bet you could just you know pick it up and swing it around one-handed, no problems. The other thing I don't like about it is <clears throat> this angle of the blade. It makes it quite difficult to get a straight vertical cut. You know, on this piece of tubing here, as I'm going down, I had a line traced nicely so I could watch my line and try and follow that. But if you don't have a line, you know, or on something round, it's pretty difficult to get it to be a nice perpendicular cut because everything on the side of the tool here, it's all kind of slanted. Some of it, this part's vertical, this part's slanted and trying to, trying to eyeball that is a little difficult, but it's kind of a trade-off. It makes it a lot easier to see the blade. So I'm a big fan of this. I really like it. It's very convenient. Um, as I said, I wouldn't just default to getting the biggest one that you can. I would look at what you're using it for. If you're only going to be cutting smaller diameter stuff, you know, small pieces of conduit or pipe or things like that, get the smaller one because then it's going to be a lot lighter and a lot easier to use. But if you do have the need for this large capacity, super convenient, 
really works well. It's so much nicer than the alternatives, you know, using a Sawzall or something like that that is just super noisy and you're getting shuck all over or using a grinder where it's spraying sparks everywhere. Very convenient, very easy to use, and it just slices through stuff like butter. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.